So a very warm welcome to all of you to another lecture on this series on simulation of communication systems using MATLAB. In the last lecture, we had derived what we call the union bound and shown that the probability of error, error for a given constellation was a function of the minimum distance between any two constellation points between any two constellation points and the underlying noise variance and the underlying noise variance. So, the probability of error is a function of the minimum distance between any two constellation points and the underlying noise variance. So, this we had shown in the last lecture. Now, let us uh, formalize this slightly more or uh, let us see what factors determine the minimum distance of a constellation the, between the points of a constellation. So, I will use some of my notes directly because uh, we have little time on our hand. So, I will state some results directly rather than deriving them in detail and we will directly use that for a PM constellation, the minimum distance between any two points is d min equals 12 log to the base 2 m for m and p log to the base 2 m divided by m squared minus 1 times average or where the average is the energy expended per bit equals log to the base 2m times since there are m bits being uh, transmitted by every symbol of that constellation. So, EB average is so d min equals root over 12 divided by m square minus 1 e average. And at the same time, we had shown that for a PAM constellation or rather we had uh, written that again we have not done this formally. So, if the I will put it this way symbol are spaced as plus minus plus minus 3 am plus minus m minus 1 am then em equals am square by 2 and e average equals m square minus 1 divided by 6 times eg or em sorry this m square by 2 a by 2 and this is a square a square and this so the amplitude so in case of a pm constellation the amplitude of each symbol determines the average constellation energy determines the average 
uh, constellation energy which is fine or uh, which makes sense. Now or you can also say that this is what we will use for normalization for any arbitrary constellation given that or let me do this for PSK the mth symbol is a j theta m and the average simply equals a square by 2 e average for psk e average equals a square by 2 and the minimum distance in case of psk i'll just write the final expression will be d min is 2a sin pi by m you can verify that for bpsk m equals 2 so d min equals 2a qpsk m equals 4 d min equals root 2a and so on so here the minimum distance equals this so now let us look at these two expressions so this is for bpsk and this is for qpsk so equals if i substitute the expression for e average then e average is root over 12 by m square minus 1 times m square minus 1 by 6 a square this equals root 2 a so d min Or rather this should be 2 a I am missing a factor of 2 somewhere this should be 3 and actually this should be 2 a so there should be a 2 here this should be 2a and uh, this shouldn't be there and this should be 3 and yeah so because I am using my notes that's why so for so now we have a consolidated expression that if we use mpsk with a fixed amplitude a as we did earlier then d min equals 2a sin pi by m and if we use pm with symbols spaced at and so on then d min my apologies for this uh, error earlier but uh, so this should be 3 and this should be 4a square and this should lead to 2a because again i am not uh, deriving this results i am using my notes and there is some writing error in the notes that's why this happened so but now we have uh, the point is that we now have this expression so these are the results that we used to develop uh, our simulations and uh, we had the key result that we had from our simulations was that I will just revisit the simulation results or I will just put those back in perspective. Just copy these two slides here, remove the annotations for better context so so these are the psk constellations these are the psk constellations so in the psk constellations as the distance or as we increase the number of points so as we so what i'll do is delete my older annotations 
we had observed that uh, increasing the number of points in a PSK constellation reduces the minimum distance. We had observed this earlier. Now we have a theoretical formula for this. Actually, this is just a formula and not a, we haven't derived this, but you can look at a digital communication course to how to derive this. It's not hard. Minimum distance between constellation points and hence the probability of error increases with the, the number of constellation points. Whereas in case of PAM, the kind of PAM that uh, we discussed, but with the kind of PAM that we discussed, the minimum distance distance is no longer function of the number of points the constellation and hence the probability of error performance is almost constant. We have seen that as well. So, but that leads us to a question. But so, should we always prefer PM to PSK? Should we always prefer PM to PSK? Obviously, this uh, for the same number of points. If we, if one of the constellations is giving you a better probability of a, a better minimum distance between points and uh, hence a better probability of error performance, then naturally you would uh, want to prefer the one that gives you the better performance. Then the problem is that uh, is there something fundamentally wrong with our comparison? The answer is yes, there is something. So this all this comparison is good. Mathematically, this comparison is not flawed, but uh, there is one key difference that uh, we have overlooked till now. So, we talked about this E average here. So, we talked about E average. So, E average, E average is the average energy expended per bit per symbol. said constellation is the average energy expended per symbol for the said constellation fine so this is the on an average how much energy are you spending per symbol for a given constellation that is e average and but uh, we are interested in transmitting bits so transmitting in tra we are interested in e b average which equals the average energy expended by the constellation per bit. The average energy expended by the constellation per bit. So now, if we look at for PM, EB average equals, we had this expression, E average equals this m square minus 1 by 3 a square. EB average naturally will be m square minus 1 a square by 3 log to the 2m 
this this is eb average for pm and for psk average equals a square yes and not a square by 2 this is a square this is in the definition so this is the baseband energy not the passband energy there's a ambiguity in that that the e average equals a square and b average equals a square by 2 so for an apples to apples comparison or that is uh, if we want compare the performance of two signal constellations then we should do that for the case where of them spend the same amount of energy per bit actually we should uh, do that for the case where they spend the same amount of energy per bit right so since we want to compare their symbol error performance or probability of bit error we also should uh, compare it uh, for the same amount of energy per bit so naturally or at least same average energy at least same energy per symbol if not uh, same energy per bit so now the question is that uh, with this we can so for a proper comparison have to normalize the constellations with respect to their average energy. we have to normalize the constellations with respect to their average energy fine for getting a proper apples to apples comparison so let's do that let us do that for a pm case first so because psk case anyway we have uh, the example so so yes this is the pm case only so for normalization i'll do this here so i'll write this in powerpoint first and then i normalization i take the average energy of a constellation that is if the constellation is stored in a vector a then norm of a divided by length of a then the average energy will be the norm squared of a divided by the length of a and divide each symbol by that fine so let us first look at what happens to the distances and then look at what happens to the constellation so this is the constellation and fine so norm a squared divided by fine norm a squared divided by length of a and square root of this and two this should be unit energy now so this will display this is the length of the constellation and this should be unit energy now so i'll run this 
this and ea is always 1 so 8 see that ea is 1 whereas if i remove these two steps if i remove these two steps then you can see that the constellation energy changes which is natural or the average energy of the constellation changes but uh, i keep these steps and the average energy of the constellation see it is ea is 21 and if i make it 16 square minus ea will change so naturally the average energy of the constellation is increasing whereas uh, if i keep this the average energy of the constellation remains the same so we have now on our hands pm with fixed energy so now let us repeat our simulation exercise so i'll do i'll start with two points run let us start with two points and as usual let us start with a very high noise variance as was the case earlier so let us run this and we have our two familiar then so let me look at the noise levels so that uh, let me look at the noise levels so that i can recreate these images 0 0.00 0 0.2 0 0.1 fine so i'll recreate these images 0. Now we start at 0 0.2 0 0.1 0 0.01 and 0 0.001 so my bad just a second and this is done so for m equal to 2 this is done this is uh, much like our previous experiment but i'll copy this image so we paste this here yes it's here so this is for two points or oh, this is a length two constellation let me repeat it for a length four constellation again we start with done and now let's copy this is here this and this and we'll do for 8 and we'll do for 16 it shouldn't take much time 8 let us close this file first and let us run this for 0 0.2 run again and Point one, three, two, run, run, this. perhaps repeat this experiment once and two run one run zero one run zero point zero zero one run this this I copy and I paste here this is for eight This is a problem actually this didn't get copied so 8 this is for 8 and finally let's repeat this for 16 you can see the general trends but uh, let's finish the experiments before we make comments Run, 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 run. And if I look at this, copy, we paste this here. So now 
if I look at this, then our observations are consistent with the, what we observed in the PSKK or uh, phase shift keying case that the blue clouds, if I may use the phase 2 so and m equals 2, we observe that uh, only the blue clouds slightly overlap and everything else uh, is non-overlapping which is like the BPSK case and which is like our previous observation but for m equals 4 the yellow clouds start to overlap like the PSK case and the green and the red clouds are non-overlapping for the m equals 8 case the points come even closer so now the noise is the noise value remains the same just that the points are coming closer so for m equals 8 case the points come even more even closer and actually you are inserting these points here so naturally you get the green clouds to somewhat overlap and in the last case even the red clouds overlap which was uh, as seen so which was seen earlier so now let us repeat our probability of error experiment for this case i'll copy the change in constellation here to this file and start at m equals 2 run So, this and uh, a handy tip, if you want to compile portion, if you do not want to run a file again and compile just one portion of the file, select that and press F9 and that will compile the selected code. Fine, so this and let us run this for m equals 4 and this, so you see the significant difference between in the probability of error. Let me repeat this for m equals 8 is run. This is for m equals 8 and let me run this for m equals 16 once and so m equals 8 we have run twice let us run m equals 16 and done. So, now if you look at it, this behavior is much closer to so if we delete and if I try to extract this, I take a screenshot and paste it here. So, this is BPSK and let me go back. So, this is PM and so Actually, since we are at it, let us make all the changes to remove all of these lines, 4, 8, and 16 add the grids and I'll do the noise next label is the noise variance variance and y label is the symbol error Symbol error probability, I will make this 2 
and done. This is done. So font size, yes, font size needs to be increased to 20. And this is done. Let me copy this. Placed here. And actually, the, the time round I went from lower to upper, but uh, so nonetheless. This gives us a similar pattern as uh, for the same energies. This gives us a similar pattern as uh, seen by us in the case of uh, PSK. So, naturally, for the same probability of error or uh, for the same uh, uh, noise variance and the same symbol energy, we get uh, a similar expression. So. In other words, which is consistent, so now we get PAM and PSK perform almost identically for the same symbol energy. PAM and PSK have similar performance trends for the same energy fine now the question is that let us look at the expression for b probability of error so probability of error equals q of d min divided by root 2 n naught and d min we have quantified in terms of the average energy so equals q of some function, some linear function, some k times or km times e average or square root of e average by So, in general, we can reduce the probability of error or in general this d min by n naught can be reduced to the expression of this form can be reduced to the form of the signal to noise ratio. So, E average the average energy expended by us per symbol of the constellation is the probability of error we can say is a function of E average by n naught or uh, the average power expended by us divided by n naught, which means that uh, we can also represent the uh, probability of error plots in terms of uh, E average by n naught. So, let us quickly do that because uh, yeah, this that is the more conventional way of looking at these probabilities of error. So, let us quickly replot this in terms of so, instead of noise variances, let me say or other SNR signal to noise ratio in signal to noise ratio, the decibel convention we will introduce in the next lecture. This and what I do is that instead of multiplying with the noise variance, this is fine and what I do instead is simply define and not equals 1 by because the signal power is 1, so the noise power is simply 1 over SNR. That and if I quickly run this for m equals 16, 
سنار نور so 1 by SNR times C0 if I quickly run this so noise variance is so SNR this is there not MSR run this this is there and SNR again so I run this again and I get something like this so m equals 8 I repeat this Four, and m equals two. So this is the more conventional form of uh, the probability of error or symbol error probability plot with the signal to noise ratio on the x-axis and the probability of error on the y-axis. We will quickly repeat this in the next lecture for the uh, PSK case and uh, then we will move on to the next topic which is non-coherent detection. Thank you.